if testosterone levels are declining, the range is going to drop with it. If people aren't aware of this information, a lot of people are left with symptoms when realistically their levels are low. And if they would have been tested three years ago, four years ago, it would have been a lot more obvious for them. Welcome back again for another video. Today we're talking about normal male testosterone levels. So what is a normal level? Are the lab ranges anything to go by? Or should you rely on other guidelines to understand where your testosterone level should be? So Tom, you're on testosterone replacement therapy. Do you remember what your levels were when you started and how that compared to the ranges at the time? Yeah, so when I first started TRT, I had three separate testosterone readings. It's been about six years now, so these might not be 100% accurate, but from what I remember, my three readings were 14.2 nanomol per litre, 12.9 nanomol per litre, and then I had one lower reading around the 9 to 10 nanomol per litre range. At the time, these were considerably lower within the given reference range compared to the current 8 to 28 nanomol per litre reference range because the reference range then was actually 10 to 38 nanomol per litre which is significantly higher than what we see now. My levels then were very clearly towards the bottom, now not so much. Apart from the 9, 10 nanomol per litre reading, the other two, the 12.9 and the 14.2 would be much more skewed to the middle of the current reference range and if people aren't familiar with the nuances regarding how the reference range for testosterone has been dropping year after year after year, they may not understand that their level that is currently within the reference range and maybe even somewhat towards the middle can actually be producing their symptoms. I mean, and that's something we see quite a lot. We will often say to patients, these levels look quite low, but then they look at the normal reference range and it looks like they're perfectly within the range. So they you know, immediately question it and they question your motive for telling them that it's low as well. I'm just looking at mine actually from about four years ago. And it's worth mentioning that it does vary between labs as well. So I think it depends on what type of analyzer they have. So if it's made by Roche or if it's made by, I don't know, I don't know who else makes analyzers apart from Roche, but there are different companies that make different analyzers and they all have to be regulated and a assessed by people from that company and then they check to make sure that they're showing the right levels and also that the labs that are using those analyzers are using the correct ranges that they've given. So mine at the time when I started testosterone replacement therapy, the range that I was given was 7.6 to 31.4. I actually thought the lower range was higher for me back then, but it's actually lower than I expected. But the top of the range is higher than we have now. So to compare, nowadays, the range that we look at is 6.68. That's dropped again. They're saying that from 6.68, it's normal, it's within range, to 25.7. And to compare the free testosterone levels. Now this is where it's quite substantially different. Nowadays it's 0.16 to 0.47 which again that's a very low free testosterone. Very low. That's considerably lower than the British Society for Sexual Medicine's levels where they say that someone's likely to be getting low testosterone symptoms and even those are quite mm. uh, conservative to be honest. Four and a half years ago, five years ago actually, it was 0.3 to 1.00. Those are the ranges which have been produced by looking at a population of people so a lot of people don't know this. What they do is they take a population of people, test their testosterone levels, then they look at the average, and then they do a statistical analysis to see the majority of confidence intervals are. So the majority of all of those, I think 95% above and below the mean, and that they use as the actual range. So it's got no bearing at all on whether you have symptoms or not. It doesn't take into account people having individual differences in levels either. So it's very interesting how these are just dropping and dropping and dropping. And we know that men's testosterone levels are dropping decade upon decade. So we're basically just saying, yeah, this is the new normal and it's just going to get lower and lower yeah exactly and the vast majority of general practitioners aren't aware of this nuance they will treat testosterone like any other marker like full blood count or thyroid or any other standard routine testing that, that you'll undergo, they will just see, oh, it's it's within the range. They're not up to date with regards to current guidelines like the BSSM. And irrespective of your symptoms, if you fall within the range, even if you're below the British Society for Sexual Medicine's less than 12 nanomol per litre criteria for potentially treatment, you'd just be told that you're normal. And again, like you said, it's because the ranges are based upon the culmination of all of the people that are currently being tested and calculated 
average from that. If testosterone levels are declining, the range is going to drop with it. If people aren't aware of this information, a lot of people are left with symptoms when realistically their levels are low. And if they would have been tested three years ago, four years ago, it would have been a lot more obvious for them. Yeah, it was only about a year ago that these levels were higher. We have results from a year ago. What we'll do is we'll try and get these ranges put up on this video. I believe the normal range was around 8.6. To 29 now it's 6.68 to 25 how far does this go really you're just going to have uh, yeah these levels which are seemingly normal for most people who are looking at the ranges but actually we know that people's physiology isn't changing so that they're, they're not getting symptoms at these lower levels presumably that is remaining constant yeah and in addition to low testosterone levels that are no longer being flagged up due to the decreasing reference range what i actually see we offer a blood testing service to non-patients a lot of people just want to get their levels checked for the sake of it i see a lot of young chaps who are very healthy who are coming in and they might be 18 19 20 they go in the gym they're living a decent lifestyle and now natural levels of 32 nanomole per litre, which is, you know, exactly where you'd want to see a young man, they're now being flagged as essentially above range, as, as too high or as abnormal. Because So obviously it doesn't have the same clinical ramifications for them. But still, to say that now 32 nanomole per litre endogenous testosterone is abnormal or too high is quite misleading. Yeah, and there's a final thing that I've noticed as well. The blood test results here from five years ago, the SHBG, which is sex hormone binding globulin, normal range was 16 to 55 now they've changed the range so now it is 20.6 to 76.7 so previously when we saw guys had an shbg above 55 we would flag that as being raised now it won't flag up it's not as easy to notice that that actually is quite high shbg if it's over 55 mm. And that's something that is less obvious. For people who don't know the importance of that, if you have a high sex hormone binding globulin, it binds to some of your testosterone and that reduces how much is available for the body to use in certain ways. And that can mean you're more likely to get symptoms despite having a more normal total testosterone level. Tom can probably ex explain it better than that, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's essentially so. It is important for other things. But. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the the role of SHBG is quite interesting. There is actually some evidence that it does facilitate the actual transport of testosterone into cells within specific tissues. The prostate potentially being one of them. SHBG is still relatively new with regards to how long ago it is identified and the body of literature that is currently being accumulated regarding its specific role. We understand, as you said, that it serves to bind to testosterone and transport it around in the blood. But when it is bound, testosterone isn't free to actually enter the cell and interact with the androgen receptor. But there are still a whole host of other roles that we still don't really understand about it. But what we do know is that too high is very problematic. It's also somewhat of a health indicator in that men with very, very low levels are usually have some quite severe issues like insulin resistance being one of them because insulin reduces the production of SHBG in the liver. If you have chronically elevated insulin due to poor metabolic health, that'll drive down SHBGs. We tend to see better results for men who have high SHBGs who start TRT compared to men who have low SHBGs who start TRT. Mm. If you have a low sex hormone binding globulin and your testosterone is fairly low, TRT for some reason doesn't seem to improve these men's symptoms as often as if they have a high SHBG. And perhaps that is something to do with the transport because we also know that if you increase testosterone levels, you suppress your SHBG levels. It could be that you're suppressing them further and then you're actually having difficulty transporting that testosterone to the cells. I don't know. That's a potential mechanism. Perhaps that's something that we'll find out more about in the next few years. But anyway, we'll try and get some interesting tables put up on this video. Below, we've also got an article which is on this very topic. So if you're interested in getting your testosterone levels checked, maybe you've had some results from your GP and you're not really sure how to read them or you're not sure about how they have interpreted them, then it would be a good idea to get in touch and something that people can run through with you. Again, if there's anything you'd like us to talk about, then drop it in the comments below. Any questions, we'll try and answer them as quickly as possible. Remember to like the video and subscribe and we'll see you next time.